Curl Clump Hacks Part 2. Hey there guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're brand new here, Hi, my name's Courtney, and I enjoy using tips and tricks from the Curly Girl Method to improve the health of my hair. And we are here today to go into more in-depth detail about how I get my curls to clump together. If that sounds helpful to you, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. Also, while you're at it, and you're thinking about it, you might want to subscribe and click that notification bell because I would love to have you stick around for some more videos. But without further ado, let's get into why you came, talking more about my curl clump hacks. All right, so a while back, I filmed and uploaded a video all about every single thing I could think of that helps curls clump together. I talked about removing product buildup. I talked about deep conditioning. I talked about product application. I talked about diffusing and plopping techniques and how I scrunch out the crunch. And I cannot believe the response to that video. Guys, y'all blew me away. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching that video and sharing it. I am so, so glad if that video was helpful to you guys because that is the whole point of this channel. I want to be as helpful as humanly possible, but I think some things kind of got lost in translation in that video because there was a lot of info in that video. I'm not gonna lie. And since that video has been out, I have noticed people using that routine and using those techniques. And there's just a few things that I want to clear up because I think some things got lost in translation because I was trying to cover so much information in one video. And if you're brand new here, hi, my name's Courtney. I make incredibly long videos that are way too full of information. If I were really trying to be a good YouTuber, I would like break these videos up into smaller bite-sized chunks. But instead, I'm like, I want to help you. I'm going to give you all the info. And then people like tap through my videos and do the 10 seconds forward because I talk too much and, and they miss stuff. So <laughs> that is why I'm here today. I'm actually taking a part of that video and I'm going to really slow it down and break down just one aspect of how I get my curl clumps because some people have been asking me why I use so much product on my hair and why it takes so long to do my hair this way. Well, when I do this routine, it takes me five minutes to apply the products and I use a teaspoon, sometimes a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of product. So that is why we're here today. I hope this video is helpful. I hope it clears up some things. And here's the thing. This is just one application technique that happens to work really well for my hair. I feel like if I can clearly communicate this information to you, it will be very helpful. So without further ado, let's slow things down and let me break down exactly how I do my product application when I'm getting my curl clumps perfect. Hey there guys. I know I said we were gonna slow things down, but you know what? We'll slow things down in a minute. I will go ahead and breeze through this part of my wash day routine because it's not necessarily critical in getting curl clumps. I mean, it's helpful if your hair is clean and product free and build up free. So, you know, I'm including that, but that's not necessarily the focus of today's video, but I'm still going to show you 
how I wash and condition my hair. All right, so it is very, very helpful if your hair is soaking, soaking wet when you are using a low poo. If you are really struggling with non-sulfate shampoos, like they just won't lather up for you, go ahead and make sure your hair is soaking, soaking wet, and just take some time when you're scrubbing your scalp. I have found that I have started scrubbing my scalp for way longer than I used to uh, when I would use a sulfate shampoo. Also, going to really take some time and rinse and rinse and scrub my scalp some more and rinse and rinse. This has also been helpful to me using low poos. Now I'm going in with the Mop Top Lightweight Conditioner. Oh man, this one, I am using it now because I'm out of the original, but it is really, really awesome. And you remember in my Tangles video... Yeah, that is how I get a really bad knot out of my hair. Remember, if you're finger detangling and you just start running into a stuck spot, squish it with some water and conditioner and that tangle will fall out. It's kind of amazing. Also, I have found that using a wet brush to finish distributing the conditioner through my hair once it's thoroughly finger detangled has been so helpful in minimizing frizz overall. Now I'm adding just a little bit of water to my hair and I'm going to do a really, really good squish to condition. Adding the water to my hair, you would think it would rinse out the conditioner, but I have found that because of the cationic components in the conditioner, it kind of binds to your hair and your hair still feels nice and slippery. It doesn't feel like the conditioner's rinsing out. So now I'm just continuing to squish and squish and squish this conditioner into my hair, make sure that it is thoroughly penetrated into every single hair strand. I really am going ahead and squishing a lot here. It is quite helpful. Also, you can see my hair soaked up all the conditioner. How cool is that? Now, you could leave the conditioner in your hair for five-ish minutes or so while you did other bath things, but in the interest of time, I'm going ahead and rinsing it out very, very thoroughly and scrubbing my scalp a bit. All right, guys. So, now we're going to be getting into how bad my forebed thing how bad my forehead vein is. Just kidding. Now I'm going to be really slowing this part down and breaking this down better than I did in the original curl clump hacks video. And the reason for that is, is that I have since seen some people work on doing this routine and I think some things got lost in translation. For one thing, people have been mentioning that it's a lot of product, that wow, you just use so much more product because your hair is so much more wet. And I don't use that much product. I don't know what your basis of comparison for a lot of product is, but I only use a teaspoon. And it's really more about the amount of water in my hair, not the amount of product. So. Yes, it is a lot of water. I will give you that. So, ooh, that water droplet on my nose was tickling me. All right, going in with my oh so beloved Curls Blueberry Bliss leave-in. Part of the trick to doing this is figuring out which products your hair likes and wants to slime up with. So right now, you can see that there is not enough conditioner in my hair. I'm having some kind of like webbing happening, if that makes sense. Y'all see that? So I need to add more water to my hair because as I was standing there and chit chatting, a lot of it dripped out. So one moment. All right, now here's where the trick comes in. I am using that much leave-in. In fact, I have increased the amount of leave-in that I'm using than I used to use because my hair is getting longer. So I really warm that up in my hands, get it really, really smooth. Then I glaze, glaze, squish into the sides 
and then I start raking. I do rake my leave-in conditioner into my hair. And I do go ahead and take it all the way up to my roots. This helps with halo frizz, and I find that it doesn't make my hair greasy. In fact, I have tried not putting the leave-in up that far, and my roots somehow get greasier faster. I do think there is something to hydrating all of your hair. I feel like it does help. Um, and because there's no silicones in it, it's not going to make my hair look really greasy. Like if I put a silicone heavy conditioner right there. All right, you can already see that my hair is trying to slime up even though I am raking it. So now here comes the very, very important part. If you are trying desperately to not have the hair stick to the back of your head, and then when you flip right side up, all your curl clumps bust up and fall apart, this is crucial right here. You must stick your fingers through your hair and lift it off the back of your head. You may have to do this two or three or four times, depending on your hair density and whatnot. And then you're looking at your curl clumps going, Courtney, those aren't attractive. You just made me ruin my hair, but at least it's not stuck to the back of my head now. You're right, I did just ruin your curl clumps because I mean, no, <laughs> here is what I do then because I've been doing everything upside down and I cannot have my hair falling in my face constantly because I would like to live life, I take the brush and I push the hair away from my face. Just like that. That actually creates a bunch of little parts in my hair while also keeping it from falling straight into my face every time I look down. And because my hair is getting so much longer, I have added one more step since doing the curl clump hacks. I take the brush and I run it on the sides right there. Now I'm gonna do the other side. And I give my head a little shake. Now look at the curl clumps. What? They came right back. Yay! Now the clumps on the back of my head are kind of still busted up a little bit. So here's the trick. I've raked it off the back of my head. It's not stuck. Now I'm going to add water and then start turning my head from side to side. And there is a trick to that too. There's a motion that you kind of do with your head. You kind of fling it. And do y'all see how my hair is swinging? That is very similar to the rake and shake that Wee Dad does. It kind of shakes all my curl clumps together. So this is just the method and technique that I developed that works best for me. Be intuitive, listen to your hair, do what works best for you. I can show you exactly what I do and what works exactly for my hair to get it to look the way that I want it to but that may not work for, for you, and that is totally okay. My goal is to help you guys figure out what works best for your hair, so I'm gonna show you everything that I do and then let y'all run with it. So, all right, here's the trick, adding more water. Here we go, we're gonna continue. Let's continue. Tiny, tiny bit of water. Adding it to the back of my head, just right there, but the water, now ran through the lengths of my hair, and I'm gonna do my squish to condition with my leave-in now. And remember, I'm not squishing hard enough to squish all the water out. I'm pretending like this is mouthwash. I want to swish it around in my hair, but not swish it so hard that I would squish it out of my mouth, out of my hair. You get the idea. It's kind of like that. 
and some water is going to drip out. I just don't want it all to come out. And I can feel that there's one section right here that didn't get enough. <clears throat> so I'm gonna add water right there. There we go. This does not rinse out my leave-in conditioner like you think it would. It actually helps it penetrate into my hair. Now I'm going to turn and I am standing up, looking straight up and shaking the hair off the back of my head. So I'm standing straight up. I'm gonna try not to fall into the tub. Standing straight up and shaking the hair off the back of my head. And oh, the curl clumps came undone, but watch this. Now they came back together. If you are finding at this step, you are getting copious, copious, copious amounts of wet frizz, you might want to try adding just a little bit more leave-in and a little bit more water to your hair. But I find that this is just right. There's really not just tons of wet frizz happening right now. So now I'm ready to put my gel in my hair. That says one teaspoon. Oh, sorry, I didn't show you what I was using. The Mop Top Salon Medium Hold Gel. One teaspoon. Really got that smoothed into my hands. Now you glaze and you glaze. And then to get my gel to evenly distribute into my hair, I will part it into two sections and gently squeeze the gel into the lengths of my hair. Then I'll kind of whack the bottoms to get the curl clumps back. And because I've been standing here chit-chatting, some water has dripped out of my hair, so. <clears throat> Adding just a tiny bit of water. Now, curl clumps are looking good, but I need to get some product in the back of my head. I do find that glazing get some product in the back of my head, but there's like areas on the sides slash back of my head that don't get enough product if I don't do this step. So one moment. So I just stood up again and I shook the hair off the back of my head. I don't even think I'm gonna need all of that. So that's another teaspoon. And if you're wondering how much a teaspoon looks like when you squeeze it into your hand, that's, that's about how much. Yeah, that's gonna be way too much. I've started measuring the amount of product that I use in order to be able to tell people, yeah, I'm not gonna use all of that, that's too much. I knew, I thought about grabbing half a teaspoon and I didn't do it. Okay, gonna make sure I got some there. And now I still have quite a bit of product on my hands and I hate it. I'm about to rinse my hands off because I did not need all that product. <clears throat> Listen to your gut people. I knew I needed half a teaspoon and I thought, no, I'll just keep it one teaspoon. Boo. All right. Standing up and shaking everything off the back of my head. And keep in mind, I'm using this amount of product for very high density, fine hair that is getting kind of long at this point.
And then right towards the end, I will go ahead and squeeze my hair harder to go ahead and start letting some of that excess water come out. And you'd be amazed. Not much gel is coming out. And that's because my hair soaked it up. All right, and that is it. I do have a tiny amount of wet frizz. There will always be some amount of wet frizz, I think, but that this technique has really, really minimized the amount of wet frizz that I have while also allowing my hair to not stick to the back of my head and become a tangled mess. If you are not feeling your hair tumble like that on the back of your head, then yeah, it's probably stuck. You really do kind of need to feel it tumble around. I promise if you have the right amount of water and product in your hair, your curl clumps will stick together. It is okay to go ahead and move your hair around more than you think. For the longest time, I would keep my head completely upside down and very, very still when I was applying product, being super, super careful. And it was when I started allowing my curl clumps to break up a bit that I started having more curl enhancement and better wash days. All right, I'm gonna go finish doing my hair and I'll be right back. All right, guys, that is exactly how I get my curl clumps to perfection when I am upside down. And I have been asked a bunch of times Courtney, I apply all my products upside down and my curl clumps look amazing and so spirally and so cute. And then when I flip my head right side up, they're all stuck to each other or they all fall apart and it's just a ratty, tangled mess. I have found that this application technique of really raking the hair off the back of your head and turning your head from side to side to side, yes, just like that, <laughs> really, really helps minimize tangling in the back of the head when you flip your head right side up. And let me know in the comments down below, have you been able to try this application technique? Did it help? Did it not help? Let me know down below. I'm curious. All right, guys, I hope you are having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to y'all later. Bye.